Hi, welcome to Lockdown TV. <laughs> no, um, welcome to my channel. There's my billboard on my head. Um, depicting on Lester Chef. Today we are doing uh, another 101. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing 101 um, posts during this lockdown. Just to get people understanding the basics of cooking. I could get very chefy, I could get very technical and show off um, but people tend to just watch those videos and then they don't go and actually replicate them and they don't learn anything from them they just see how we chefs show off um, stuff and uh, like I wrote my book I didn't write my book for chefs I wrote it for everyday people and I'm trying to do the same with um, the videos during this lockdown I'm doing them for everyday people who who enjoy cooking but don't understand why they cook the way they do um, so I'm just breaking it down into simple terms and um, and giving you explanations and reasons as to why we do certain things. If you're wondering why I suddenly have a new ornament over here, this baby, actually let me bring it closer to the camera. Um, you can read the Bosch. Um, I am affiliated with Bosch. Um, if you haven't realized, um, if you hadn't noticed that all my videos actually labeled um, with Bosch in the title, uh this actually is called the vitamax mix to go it is a smoothie machine uh let me just show you what it does okay this is the normal jug you can crush ice and other things with it it's glass you can take that off this isn't an advert by the way um but i'll explain why i'm showing you this thing and then if you're someone in a rush that's why it's called the mix to go you clip that on, you blend your smoothie, blitz it up in here, and then turn it upside down. Don't be like me and try opening it with stuff inside, and your smoothie will be in here, and you seal it, and you go. Done. This opens up on the top. If this is too big for you, you can actually do with this smaller one then. Same process. Turn your Vitamix upside down. Whoa, as I drop everything. I should actually be doing this at a table and now it's a smaller one um, you can see by the size of my hand how much smaller this is you blend your smoothie you turn it upside down put the lid on and off you go this comes off voila simple quick in the morning um the reason i'm actually showing you this is not because i suddenly want to do a very mark advert i'm allowed to mention brand names anyway it's not because I'm trying to sell you anything. I'm just showing you the machine that I'll be using to make this recipe. We are not making a smoothie. We are doing a, a marinade. Um, but I'll be using this to marinate. I don't want to bring out my big blender. Um, and this can easily be used for marinades. What we'll be doing um, with it isn't that complicated. Mix to go. That's it. Um, by Bosch. And it's a lot cheaper than that other one that's got a bullet in the name. Uh, I'm sure you guys know which one I'm talking about. It's got a certain bullet in the second half of the name. Um, so have a look at it. Um, very good quality as well. And it's a Bosch, so it's German made. Someone was tagging me, actually a few people on Twitter. We've got a competition running there on my Instagram and on my um, Twitter page. Um, healthy at home is the hashtag. Yeah, we're trying to get people to post um, healthy dishes and healthy recipes. And someone tagged me on one of their Bosch machines, which is 35 years old. Yeah, I've got a Bosch mixer in the back. Uh, if you go back in my videos on this channel, you'll actually see um, me unboxing um, my Bosch um, mixer. And that one is a sturdy metal one. And the person who tagged me, tagged me on a plastic one. Uh, just shows you how good quality um, Bosch is. And I'm not just saying it. I don't link myself with brands uh, just in jail for a paycheck. Um, it has to be something that I believe in and something that I can swear by. Um, because I don't want people swearing at me because I told them go get this thing and then it doesn't work. I've been with Bosch now. It's going on the fourth year. Actually, the fifth year maybe. I've been affl uh, afflicted, affiliated with them. Um, very, very good stuff. Actually, you can even, if I lift this up, you can even see it on my apron. Anyway, enough about that. 
Um, the reason why I'm showing that machine is because we're doing Marinade 101. People claim to know how to braai and they also claim to know how to uh, marinate meat. Whenever I tell people about meat, they start to doze off because everyone thinks they understand meat. Uh, and you'd be surprised <laughs> how very few people actually understand meat. They don't understand cuts of meat. They don't understand how to cook them properly. And even if you ask them why are you marinating lamb, they can't tell you why. They've just seen other people do it. They saw their dad doing it. They saw their granddad doing it. They grew up with people doing it. And so they do it as well. And it tastes good. I mean, if you fill something with a whole lot of flavor, um, if you fill it with a whole lot of um, seasoning, it will taste good. I mean, that's why we like chips, because you can hardly taste potato. You just taste all the flavoring in the chips. I'm talking about potato chips, not fries. So it's the same thing with marinating um, good quality meat. Because you've filled with so many other flavors, people are enjoying those flavors. They're not actually enjoying the flavor of the meat. Which brings me to why you shouldn't be marinating good cuts of meat. Um, fillet, for example. No, you shouldn't be marinating fillet. You wouldn't marinate a ribeye steak. You wouldn't be marinating a sirloin steak. You shouldn't be marinating lamb, um, for example. Um, lamb, uh, it depends which part of the lamb, by the way. Um, but if it's a good quality lamb cutlet, you shouldn't be marinating it because it's full of flavor already. All you're doing when it's on the bra is seasoning it. You can baste it as well. There's a video on here where I did it for Woolworths where I basted the lamb after sealing it. So you seal all the flavor and the moisture in it first and then you can marinate it. The only types of meat that you should be marinating are the ones that have little fat in them or cheap cuts so chicken um, chicken breast has a little fat in it and um, we're going to be doing wings today and um, they have a, a bit of fat in them but the it's a cheap cut it's a wing so we're going to be marinating it and we're also going to be marinating um pork fillet um pork fillet is not an expensive cut and it hardly has any fat in there hence us marinating it um the base of a marinade should always be an acid um, okay, there are three components. Um, let me break it down. Sorry about that noise you keep hearing. It's the chair I'm sitting on, the stool. Um, the base of the marinade will always have an oil. Um, it will always have an acid. And it will always have a flavoring. Those are the three. The oil can be butter. It can be olive oil. It can be canola oil. Just any oil. Okay, the acid can be lemon juice. It can be an alcohol, um, like a whiskey or a brandy or... Um, even red wine, if you're making cocova, for example, um, and it can be a vinegar, um, that kind of acid. Um, let it be a flavorful acid, though. Don't just put like vodka in a marinade. Um, it's not adding anything. Um, the reason you want an acid, though, an acid breaks down um, tough muscle fibers. That is why I say you only marinate cheap cuts of meat, because they are the ones that have lots of sinew and lots of um, tough um, fibers in them. And then the last one is all your flavorings, which is what I'm going to be showing you now. Your flavorings will be your herbs, as I pull a zap sign at you. <laughs> your herbs, um, your sugars, your salt, your um, spices. Those are the flavorings that will be added to your marinade. So it's those three basic components. And then you, you change them up depending on the type of meat that you're marinating. Because we're doing um, two white meats, we're doing pork and we're doing... Um, um, chicken wings you can use the same marinade for both um, if you've ever wondered uh, which marinades to use for chicken find yourself a pork marinade or a rib marinade they will work all the time with chicken wings um, but they won't work with chicken breast that's the other thing so when using a pork marinade on chicken you want it to be chicken that has flesh on it um, that's got um, the skin on it so it will be your drumsticks your thighs your wings um, when you are marinating chicken breast, um, you want a different type of marinade. But we'll touch on that one day when I do chicken breast. Um, so the marinade I'm about to do, I'm winging it as well. This isn't a recipe of mine that I've done before. I'll be winging it as I'm making it. Just to show you how versatile it is working with um, marinades. The basics are always there. So this is how I come up with a new recipe. I'm doing it, well it's not live since this is recorded. But I'm doing it live as I'm recording it. I uh, haven't written anything down. There's nothing next to me. There's nothing at the table I'll be recording. I'm literally going to go into my fridge, into my cupboard, see what I can find. 
and then we're going to use this baby to blend up and marinate um, for a braai. Um, we're taking the camera out. It's sunny outside. You're going to get to see porridge as well if he behaves himself and doesn't jump on me. Um, and I'll show you how to marinate wings and um, pork fillets and we're going to be brying on an actual fire. Oh, speaking of brying on the fire, I will do a braai um, video um, separately because that's another thing. People claim to know how to braai and then they come to a braai class of mine and then they're like, ah. <laughs> but if you are braying, always use um, firewood. If you're someone who isn't patient enough to work with firewood, then make it a blend of wood and charcoal. Don't just make it charcoal on its own. The reason is you want that smokiness to add flavor to whatever you're brying. Um, the reason you're brying is because you want that smoke. Charcoal will give you smoke, but the smoke has no depth. It's just smoke. Whereas if you're using wood, wood has flavor. It doesn't just smoke your meat. It actually adds flavor to it. And if you're cooking, not cooking, brying, um, cuts of meat that absorb flavor a lot, wood would be your friend. And if you really, really, really do not want to use wood, then buy wood chips. They sell them at hardware stores. They sell them at, uh, I was about to mention one of the stores, but I'm not being paid for that. Um, there's a, um, you find them at, um, yeah, the Big M store, the one where people were, were hugging uh, tissue. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about, where you buy things in bulk. In that camping section, they have wood chips that you can buy. Um, just keep a bit of them anywhere. Buy a pack and just keep them in your garage or a cupboard. Um, whenever you are brying anything, just throw them into your fire with your um, charcoal if you do not want to use firewood. Anyway, um, we'll do a bry one another day. This is how you make a marinade from scratch with what you have in the kitchen or what I have in the kitchen. Okay, um, don't be overwhelmed by the amount of things you see in this photo. Uh, but if you are, there's a reason why there's so many things. I'm um, this video, not photo. Um, because we are making a marinade, the trick with the marinade is to fill it with as many flavors as possible. Uh, and you can go as crazy as you want with the marinade. That's an awesome thing with it. And remember, your marinade is also going to become your basting sauce. So you don't want it to become too watery. You want it to be something that will stick, but you also want it to be something that will be absorbed by what you are marinating it in. So remember those three components. You need your acid, which I am um, fulfilling. Hey, that's a big word, eh? Um, with this over here, this is lemon juice. Um, it's probably about lemon juice of three lemons, I would say. Um, and then remember your second most important thing is adding an oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. Um, extra virgin olive oil. One day I'll do a tutorial on olive oils um, and explain extra virgin and virgin and normal olive oil. And then you need your flavorings. Um, these are all your flavorings here. Oh, um, also to add to the acid, we've got um, in here, this is half an onion. And in here we've got, um, it's about half a, a small pineapple. Okay, so this is an acid, this is an acid, and the lemon juice is an acid. Okay, these three. I'm going to add them now to my blender to blend away. In the meantime, whilst I explain the other ingredients. So I'm starting off with my onions. I'm also adding my pineapple. You'll notice I rough cut everything because I'm going to be blending it. You don't have to be cutting it all sexy like. And then I'm throwing my lemon juice in there. I'm putting it all in there. And then into our Vitamix. It won't work unless the light comes on. There's a ring around it. I don't know if you can see it there. This red ring is actually a light. It switches on. Um, I'm sure you can spot it there. If this is not locked, then the button will not light up and it won't switch on. Okay. Now it's on. Okay, that was maybe what? Five seconds? 
Well, there's a time on this thing. I'm <laughs> sure the channel will tell you. And now we've got a very acidic smoothie. You don't want to be drinking that. And into there, I'm taking my rosemary, chucking it in whole, twigs and all. And then these over here are sun-dried chilies. I dried them myself. I literally just left them out in the sun for about two days. I'm um, in the winter sun uh, three or four days and they'll dry. Can you hear that? Those are dry chilies. I'm chucking them in there as well. And these are all flavorings. This is my pepper. I'm going to be putting about a tablespoon of pepper in there. This over here is my salt, sea salt. Also going to be putting in about a tablespoon. Don't put too much salt because this can be fixed later on when we taste it. This here is um, ginger. I left the skin on. Remember it's a marinade and a basting sauce. So it doesn't really matter whether the skin is on or off. Also going in there. This is my garlic. I'm not even going to peel the garlic. Putting it all in there. Yeah. Uh, if your mom is in the kitchen watching you do this. Uh, I suggest you ask her to step out. And over here is the sugar. Um, this is raw honey. I do not use um, normal sugar for my marinades. I just find um, you have to actually cook the marinade down so the sugar melts. And also sugar is a bit too sweet in my opinion. Whereas with honey like this, it actually adds flavor rather than adding sweetness. Um, so I use, um, this is native nose. Let me lift it up. You can check her out on um, social media as well, Native Nosi. Based Ko Pitori, um, the honey is produced in Limpopo. Very good honey. Uh, yeah, I've been supporting her for years and years. And I'll explain raw honey in another clip of video. Um, it's probably about two tablespoons I'm putting in there. Yeah, yeah, I know some of you are going to say, hey, but that doesn't look like two. Two tablespoons. <laughs> and I'm going to blend these ones up. In the meantime, okay, if you can see in there, it still looks like a smoothie, it's still very watery. Okay, and then this over here is about a tablespoon of um, Italian herbs. If you can find raw Italian herbs, those will be sage or basil, um, things like that. I'd rather use that, but these are dry ones. Bring them in there. This over here is crushed coriander. That is about two teaspoons out there. This is um, nutmeg. Only going to put two pinches. You don't want to be putting too much nutmeg. This is cloves. With cloves, I'm only putting one pinch. And over here, we've got paprika. I'm going to be putting about a tablespoon of this. I like paprika. Smoked paprika is your friend when you're cooking. It's not hot and it actually adds flavoring as well. And it adds color too. You want to have a marinade that's colorful. And now we're going to be adding our olive oil. This will be about four tablespoons I would say or maybe five I um, mean actually I'm gonna add a little bit more because pork tends to be dry so more oil the better and we're going to be blending it some more spices and so we have a marinade for our wings and our our pork I'm gonna open up the lid so you can see what's inside there we go that's our marinade now what I'm gonna do which you should also do is taste it um, you haven't added any meat to it therefore it's still okay for tasting uh, always, always, always taste your marinade. Woo! 
those chilies have given it a kick. I'm going to add a little bit more honey. But it tastes good. The reason why I'm adding more honey is because I see it's still a bit watery. You want it to be sticky. Yeah, that is a lot of honey, but it's a very good honey, so it's not going to make it too sweet. And then twist it, get it in there. Voila, we have our marinade. Okay, this over here is our chicken wings. I'm going to be generous and coat those a lot uh, with about half of it. And this is our fillet. Ideally, you should be doing this the day before you bry. Um, that's everything in there. should be doing this the day before you bry, not on the day. If you are doing it on the day, um, let it marinate... Um, for about at least two hours minimum two hours and in the fridge because you're working with chicken and pork they're very um, volatile when it comes to getting uh, or going off and also bacteria growing on them you don't want to be making people sick so cover it very well and into your fridge. I'm going to be putting them in the fridge for about three hours because I was silly and I didn't do this yesterday. Courage. Come boy. How you doing? 